Tales series. Look up here in the upper right hand corner. Watch this throughout the day today. A giant outbreak of fires has taken place across a whole Canadian province all at once. Look up to the northeast, up here in Quebec. All of Quebec just caught on fire all at once on a clear day. I would say this would be some kind of terrorism of some kind or an attack. Here it is. Here we are. I'm going to let the images load. You can see this morning it's clear, just partly cloudy skies, nothing really crazy going on there. And then, well, there's last night. Here's today. All of Southeast Quebec just caught on fire, guys. All of it. Insane. Insane. Look at that. The whole thing. All at once. Today. Now, this is on top of Nova Scotia, New Jersey, and the entire western side of Canada burning. All of this up here is smoke. And I'll take you in at the start of the... Here, there's last night. Look at BC, Canada up here. All of that is smoke. We, it, it's whole provinces are burning. The black dots are spots where there are fires. And then that, this is all smoke here. So this is now BC, Alberta, Saskatchewan. And now over to the east, you have Nova Scotia and Quebec. All burning at once. Getting back over here again, we're going to look at this again. We're going to see if there's anything else in any other Canadian provinces, but this is phenomenal right there. I, I, what? What? You kidding me? How many times did he say all at once? And you can see that all those fires do start simultaneously. All at once, the world can overwhelm me. There's almost nothing that you could tell me that could ease my mind. Which way will you run when it's always all around you? And the feeling lost and found you again, the feeling that we have no control. Around our sun, some say, is gonna be the new hell. Some say, it's still too early to tell. Some say, it really ain't no myth at all. Keep asking ourselves, are we really strong enough? And there's so many things that we got too proud of. We're too proud of. I want to take the preconceived out from underneath your feet. We can shake it off and instead we'll plant some seeds. Watch them as they grow and with each new beat. From your heart the roots grow deeper. The branches will they reach for what? Nobody really knows. But underneath it all there's this heart alone. And what about when it's gone? Oh, it really won't be so long. So, a couple points of contention I would have. He says terrorism, and I believe there's a natural phenomenon occurring here, and they're dealing with it the best they can, which means it's not an attack on the people. So when I refer to plasma fire, I'm referring to the effect. Not necessarily the cause, but the way the fire works, the electricity component to these fires, whether it's directed energy, which is provable in some cases, such as the five secret service vehicles of Joe Biden's that got smoked a few months back, and Paradise, California, and maybe some others, provably directed. But most of these seems as if it is, if it is directed, it's being directed out into rural areas where... Not too many structures are being burned. So that which you just heard was Dutch sense pointing out the fire starting simultaneously. And the only way that I saw that 
was watching Never Lose Truth, and she's been covering Plasma Fire fairly consistently this summer, and she knows all of the same basic indicators that I do from having watched my videos, and she features some of my content occasionally. But what she's showing you here is that the structures burn down and that trees around them are fine, and she shows it again and again and again. Foreign, as you can see. But, yeah, you check out. Look at all of the trees. The trees are fine. Again. You know, very specific. It's like these wildfires target homes and cars and structures, but they leave alone. Leave alone the greenery. Miss these wood fences. Not even, not even do you see any, um, um, soot or anything on, they're clean. They're clean. And this red looks like, you know, a metal gate. But look at this car. Look at this car. And it, as far as I'm concerned, that's directed energy weapons. This car or truck was targeted by directed energy weapons, as you can see right here. Let me, uh... Where's my magnifier? That's where I would disagree. And I went down the same path for a long time during, during my learning curve. She proceeds to point out the melted glass, the missing door handles, the uh, intense amount of rust on the vehicle. She points out all the same indicators and burn signatures of plasma fire. <clears throat> but when I say plasma fire, I'm not necessarily referencing the cause, just the effect of what's left behind afterwards. And I believe when this electricity is flowing through the ground, when there's only trees in the area, it burns the trees, particularly the ones with the deepest roots. When it comes near a structure, I believe all of the electricity draws toward that structure, that car, that house, and leaves a surrounding untouched area around the house because all of the electricity is drawn toward the structure. Trees are fine, structure's gone. news that we told you about at the top of the hours that school bus becoming engulfed in Queens. CBS 2's Ali Bauman live at the scene right now in Rego Park. Ali. Maurice and Christine, this was a near disaster, but thankfully right now there are no reported injuries. Now, I just spoke exclusively to the driver of this school bus. Take a look at this image here of this completely charred out school bus. He told me he was driving children home from school. There were about six kids on board between ages 5 and 11 years old. He made the turn. He was driving. He's been a bus driver for more than 30 years. And all of a sudden, the engine in the front of the bus just started smoking, and then the flames started started spreading quickly throughout. He stopped the bus. He helped those six children off board who were, of course, panicking, seeing the flames and, and the smoke all around. He stayed calm. He helped them get off and get to safety. Their parents have all picked them up. But you can see some of the cars around it are also engulfed or, you know, have been charred out as well because the fire spread to the other flames. It's unclear exactly what happened, why it happened, but he said, of course, that the, the engine caught fire. Firefighters were called here for around 3.45 p.m. for reports of multiple vehicles on fire. We're at Saunders Street by 65th Road in Rego Park, que Park, Queens. There were about 30 fire personnel on uh, off the scene here responding to get those flames uh, under control here. Take a listen to what the bus driver said to us. I was going to make a turn here. And then I see smoke mm -hmm. come from the, from the wood, from, from, the, from the wood. From the engine? From the engine. And that's it. And then it's just how 
fast, once you once it started, how fast did the flame spread? Very fast. A matter of seconds. Good evening, I'm Dana Tyler. And I'm Dick Brennan. We begin with breaking news. Everyone escaped unhurt after a school bus fire in Queens. New video shows just the intensity of these flames, which, which grew f quickly, and then there was all that smoke out there. CBS 2's Allie Bauman spoke to the bus driver, and she joins us live in Rigo Park. Allie. Well, Dana and Dick, thankfully nobody was injured in this, but it could have been so much worse if it wasn't for the heroism of the bus driver who was behind the wheel of what's now this charred out school bus. This all happened around 3.45 p.m. on Saunders Street by 65th Boulevard in Rigo Park. The driver says he... Notice that white car right there still has its hood. We're going to go over some of the images here where it shows that car ends up with no hood along with the two behind it and the doors completely burned off. He had six kids on board between 5 and 11 years old. He was taking them home from school when all of a sudden the front engine on the bus started smoking. The flames spread quickly, but the driver stayed calm and got all the kids off board where they waited until their parents picked them up. Meantime, the fire spread to five other vehicles, completely ruining a total of three of them. Notice there's no glass in the bus whatsoever. It's all melted. Not even a little bit of broken glass around the edges. We spoke to the fire chief and bus driver. Take a listen. There was heavy fire. Actually, the, the, the flames were as high as the fourth floor window. It was almost like a fire tornado. But I just wanted to say that the bus driver did an excellent job getting the kids. There were six kids still on the bus, and he got them off quickly before the fire really took off. Put them out. To the front and I open the back door, to the front, get them out. Don't be scared, everything will be all right. You know, and then I uh, call their parents, the school, the company, and they were, they were panicking. The kids. You know. Again, no reported injuries, and you can see that crews are still here now that the flames are out, investigating before, uh, investigating how this all happened before they take the bus and the vehicles away. For now, we're live in Rigo Park, Queens. Ali Bauman, CBS 2 News. So for whatever weird reason, this car is missing its hood now, along with the two cars behind it. And this is what it looks like when you have broken glass around the edge of a window remaining. That's what you would expect to see. But on the bus, there is no such broken glass around the edges. It's all gone. Here, as they're towing a car away, you can see it completely burned off the rear door and most of the front door. And you can see the rusting effect. Electrolysis. Missing the hood. Missing the windows on the sides, but still has the windshield. You can see the, uh, the two cars beside the bus. Those two are both missing their hoods. And their glass. Looks like the engine block of the bus is gone. There's no glass in there anywhere. And they said that the six kids on board were from a private yeshiva or whatever they call it. It's a private Jayish school. You know, the guys with the small hats that you can't talk about. And I would be in, there's the white car before it was missing its hood. How did three cars end up missing their hoods? Now we know from the five Secret Service vehicles of Brandon when he returned them to the Hertz rental car they all went up in flames only in the engine compartment when they were all completely turned off and not even running we know from that incident alone 
that this kind of fire can be used to send a message. And I would be interested to find out who the parents of those six children were. Very likely, very possible. They're in a decision-making capacity in a very powerful organization. And this would be quite a way to make a statement, play hardball negotiation, and say, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm really relieved to find out no one got hurt. Yeah. Back to the negotiating table. Have you had a change of heart on that position you take, on that deal we're trying to make? So here's where you can see all three cars are missing their hoods. The one up front, that one, and the one behind it. I think there's a better closer up shot of the missing hoods. That's the first car and the second car in line. That one might have some of its hood left. This one completely had it detached, almost like they almost like they removed the hood, but I don't think that's protocol for firefighters to remove a hood from a car. I think the, her the hood burned off. This one clearly is missing 100% of its hood. Just pointing out some anomalies here. Very curious. The bus driver said it took seconds for the flames to spread. And somehow, that's the white car up front, missing its hood, that we saw also missing its doors. No glass, which means it melted, not broke. If it broke, there would still be shards around the edge. And glass melts at a very high temperature, higher than a normal fire reaches. But I don't think it's always targeted. There are different ways that this fire works. The electrical component of these fires burns in ways we don't understand. This is from the wildfires in Nova Scotia, Canada. And it, someone else that pointed this out said that bridge was targeted. I don't believe so. But I don't believe it was made out of wood either. I think it's the nature of the bridge, something about the metal. Clearly you can see the trees all around that bridge are still intact. There's not a whole lot of burning. There's ground scorch, but the trees are still okay. But I don't think that bridge was targeted. And it's possible that that bus wasn't targeted either. Sometimes the electricity finds its way to latch onto something and burns things in weird ways that we don't understand. Here's a bridge that I filmed in my very first plasma fire, and at the time I thought it was laser strikes that hit this bridge. I was sure they were doing target practice using the bridge. But now I think it's electricity... You have the metal railing on the right and the metal railing on the left, and I believe it's filaments of electricity arcing between the two metal railings that make all these appearances of what looks like laser strikes. But they all go exactly the same direction, and most of them are right on the seam where one board meets another, like the path of least resistance. I don't believe these are laser strikes anymore. I believe these are arcs of electricity going between the two metal railings creating these what appear to be something like laser strikes. 
Spanish Fork River Park Bridge that I've spoken of with the 18 laser strikes. One, and you'll notice there's a metal beam here, that straight edge is a metal beam. This one has a diagonal metal beam, but most of them start on one metal beam and go one way or the other. They're all the same width, and it doesn't go from hot to medium to cold. You don't see any burn here. It goes from absolute burn to zero in the same one inch and a half width, like a laser strike. Let's just call it what it is. That's a laser strike, and there's 18 more. Here, 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 all all placing the shot of these directed energy weapons. So, I'll just go through and show you. They all seem to come off of one of these metal beams, like what's right there, and I'll show you from the bottom side too. We'll get under here and show you. So there's two. Again, that one comes off of this beam, but it's got a diagonal going underneath. Notice how they're all right on the seam where two boards meet and they all start at one of the uh, cross beams underneath and they all go the same direction, perpendicular to the bridge, parallel with the boards. This is part of the learning curve. That one that's right there, you can see the two screws on either side of it. One right there and one right there. Those screws are going down into the metal beam underneath. So each one of these laser strikes starts on one of those metal beams, goes perfectly uh, 90 degree perpendicular, and most of them are on a seam in between two boards. This indicates electricity, finding the path of least resistance, and part of my learning curve, was expanding my understanding from this is laser strikes from a directed energy weapon to there's something else going on here. This one comes off of that beam right here and goes this way a little bit. There's three more. This one, I don't know if you can see the beam and maybe this one's like one of the exceptions. And maybe this one too. Most of them come off of a beam, but all of them have some similarity. They're all this wide and zero burn on either side. That's a laser strike. And to hit this one bridge 18 times was target practice. When they charge up the directed energy weapons like the Athena by Lockheed Martin, by the ionized atmosphere, check out Ilana Freeland under an ionized sky, the ambient plasma burns the poles and everything else I've been showing you, but this is the directed energy weapon shots. Okay? That's what these are. I'll go on, come back and show you some more. This one again, there's the, uh, here's the beam right here that it comes off of. So most of them start at one of these beams where you see these two bolts. Again, like that one. No, that wasn't a shot. I'd say that was just something weird. All of them go clear through, what is this, like two inch, two and a half inch thick wood? Without leaving any burn signature on either side. Those are, those are lasers, okay? That's what this was, target practice. Firing up those dudes. And I'll get it. So we all have room to grow. And there is a learning curve to this. But I don't think it's all firing up those dues. I think this is electricity. And it works in ways that I don't understand. And I'm still learning. But unlike a lot of people, I've gotten past the directed energy phase thinking it's all directed energy. So, when I say plasma fire, I'm referring to the burn patterns, and I do believe there is a natural phenomenon happening where it is not directed, and I know for sure there are certain instances where it is directed, such as the five secret service vehicles, and the engine block is the densest piece of metal, so it draws the energy. In a microwave, a more dense... you. 
My analogy is put a potato and a bread roll in the microwave for one minute. The potato will come out much hotter because it is more dense. This is also what you see when you see logs, big logs, burnt right next to dry foliage, leaves, and grass because the log is more dense, so it draws more of that energy and it works like microwave energy. It locks onto the engine block, so whether it's the bus, the three cars next to it that were missing their hood, or the truck that Carol was talking about that had a hole in its hood, whether this energy is directed or not, it latches onto the engine block of these cars and it works like electricity or microwaves.